Did you know that God really only has one law? So many religious factions have different instructions, rules, and regulations. But the only law that really matters is love. God's Only Law with host Bill Cohen shares that one true law. Here's Bill. Hello, my name is Bill Cohen, and I'm going to share a story of unconditional love, one where everyone in the story is invited to live in a kingdom born of love. Before God began creating, he had no one to share his great love with. So he began planning. God's plan is to create his kingdom, the kingdom we first caught a glimpse of in the garden when he walked with Adam and Eve, the kingdom Jesus came to tell us about, the eternal kingdom of his love, which he details in Revelation. His kingdom is being formed by volunteers who are choosing to be born again. When we are first born into this world, God breathes the breath of life into our bodies, as he told us in Genesis. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. This first birth is of the flesh, and was God's choice because he loves us and wants us to willingly choose to be a part of his kingdom. God continues in Genesis, and Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast in the field. But for Adam, there was not found an helpmeet for him. He wants us to know that being alone is not good, and he created helpmeets for us to become our partners in this life. So in Genesis, he continues to tell us, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. He created us male and female for a reason. God is not interested in having slaves or watching an ant farm. He wants partners who are willing to help him build and populate his kingdom. So he asks us to be fruitful and multiply. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth on the earth. This is only the beginning of his plan. To be his partners, we must choose to see his kingdom. In John, he tells us, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So we must choose to be born again. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both you, thy, thou and thy seed may live. Joshua tells us he made a choice. And if it be seem evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We all have this option. However, we must all choose for ourselves. Do we want to enter his kingdom? In John, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. This is our choice. However, only when we learn to love him as he loves us will we be humble enough to accept his salvation and be born again of the Spirit, thus following him into eternity. So in John, he says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Jesus is trying to help Nicodemus, a ruler of the Pharisees, understand that entering the kingdom of God requires a rebirth of the spirit so that we can follow the spirit and not the flesh. In Romans, we learn we can decide to be reborn into his family by accepting Jesus as our Savior. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Jesus is the manifestation of God's love for us, and he is the only way into the kingdom he is creating. This might sound exclusive, like a cult or something. However, all of the other major religions tell us we need to tip the scales in our favor by following rules or laws or some moral code in an effort to earn our way into salvation. God wants to show us we can never earn our way into his perfect kingdom. The only way In is his free gift of grace, which he offers in the form of Jesus' blood. 
We learn in Romans, we have all sinned, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, how can we ever measure our good deeds against the perfect God and expect to earn his love? God's law of love leads us to Jesus' sacrifice. In Romans, he tells us, But God commandeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And he tells us to seek his kingdom and his righteousness in Matthew. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And again in Luke, But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He's on our side, and it will be his good pleasure to welcome us into his kingdom. But he will not force us. Love never forces. We must choose ourselves. God hates to see us following the devil's lies or man's delusions to our own death. So he sent Jesus in the form of a man not to condemn us, but rather to save us, as he told us in John. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him might be saved. God sent Jesus to clarify the path to righteousness, which leads us to his kingdom. Then God gets out of our way, allowing each of us to make our own decision. While on the cross, Jesus completed the life the Father assigned to him, fully demonstrating he is willing to bear the pain and suffering of this life to save us. So in John we hear, when Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head, and he gave up the ghost. God's plan provides a way for us to escape into eternity. To access his plan, we must believe in Jesus and accept that we need to be patient enough to allow God's timing to work out. We cannot walk away from him every time something bad happens. He wants us to love the way he does, unconditionally. He never quits on us. He is always knocking the door of our hearts, as he told us in Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. Jesus' death on the cross introduced God's new world order, the one that we will rule his kingdom, one where those who had been unwelcome are now welcome, a world without force, where reigning means serving and everyone is loved. So in Matthew, he tells us, but it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus came as a humble servant who was willing to die for us. When we look around at those who want to be chief among us, are, are they truly living their lives as unselfish servants? Rebellion comes from our denial of God's love. We can witness this today in every part of our world. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called his sons. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Jesus exposed the scribes and the Pharisees in Matthew. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. He wants us to understand the laws and ordinances those religious leaders created were not from God, but instead born of the flesh. Those religious leaders were no different than those of us today who choose to ignore God and create our own gods, serving them instead of the real God. This choice he offers is grounded in his love. As he told us in John, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. The subtle difference rests in our intent. If we ignore God and his law of love, we pr prove we do not love him and therefore do not know him. When we abide in, our, in him, our sins are covered by his perfect love. This brings us the vision of a, our covering our sleeping grandchildren with a blanket. The innocence of that moment covers the less than perfect life they led that day. Our love covers all of their faults as we see them peacefully resting from the day's struggles. So in Romans we hear, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, 
which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are all his grandchildren. We have all sinned. But our, love, but our God covers us with the blanket of his grace made of forgiveness and love. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. His truth frees us from the lies of this selfish world. How can we possibly live in his kingdom, where there will be no more deaths, sorrows, pains, or tears, if we do not learn to love as he does? So in Revelation, God tells us, and God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. We must learn to love God and our neighbors as if they were our grandchildren. Next week we will continue this love story by exploring what loving like God means. Come with an open mind, willing to reason with God's truth. Test every part of the story, for he is not looking for lukewarm followers, only truth seekers who are looking for his perfect love. Comments and opposing opinions and suggestions for future topics are all welcome. Just send me an email, bill at reasoningwithgod.com. May the blessings of God overwhelm your week. Thank you.